Autoloading is one of PHP's most useful features when it comes to object-oriented code. Gone are the days of being forced to include a huge list of code on the off chance that later some of your code might need it. All you need to do is register an autoloader, then make sure your autoloader and files use the same rules. Let's take a look at how we might make our own autoloader. Let's take the code from our last lesson and adopt it to use autoloading. Autoloading is important because as our application grows, it seems only logical that the code we depend on grows too. As we develop, we'll most likely have more than just HTTP and Twitter, but all sorts of other includes too. To save us including each of them manually, let's make our own autoloader, allowing other developers, or future you, to add dependencies easily. Let's tuck this autoloader away in a bootstrap file to keep our index nice and clean. We go to our workspace and add new file. We can just create bootstrap.php and we'll just shove it in the root here. Then the code that we enter will look like this. Here we can see an autoloader being registered with an anonymous function. The anonymous function acts as a callback. Basically, whenever a class is referenced that PHP does not recognize, it will hit this callback and pass the name of the class in as a string argument, which we can see here on line 3. Our callback then accepts that string as an argument. Line 4 will replace any backslashes with a forward slash. PHP knows this means a directory separator, regardless of your operating system. The reason we have two backslashes in the first argument is that only putting one backslash in here would escape the single quote, and that will cause a syntax error. So if we take one of these slashes out here, you'll see the syntax is all changed, and that is broken. So you need two backslashes here. We then create a new string starting with the current directory, appending the source src folder, and use that new class name and suffix .php on the end of the string to make a full file path. Now we include this file, otherwise PHP won't know how to use it. Let's go back to index.php and put this all together. So we no longer need to include these files manually, so we can delete this line. And we can change this include here, so instead of including one of the classes directly, we can say that we'd like to include bootstrap. Let's try having a look at this in our preview mode and see if it worked. Perfect. Even though we did not explicitly include the classes we wanted, as we did in the last lesson, PHP is still happy because it knows where to find the code. Now, it's important to have a base understanding of making your own autoloaders, but it might not always be a great idea to roll your own. For years, autoloading code in PHP was a bit hit or miss, and this was down to everyone wanting to write their own autoloaders and organizing their code in their own different ways. This meant implementing 10 different packages could mean 10 different styles of autoloading being used. These days, we have the PSR0 standard and a new and shiny standard called PSR4. These two standards were written by the PHP Framework Interoperability Group to make autoloading dependencies incredibly easy. We'll look more at how PSR4 works with Composer in the upcoming lessons.